What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're, we're going to talk about how to apply and edit different materials inside of twin motion. Um, so I'm probably going to break this up into two parts. Um, the first part is going to be how to apply and edit those materials. The second part is going to be how to create custom materials inside of twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to directly import a SketchUp model into twin motion to use as kind of an example file. So in this case, I'm using a model called apartment loft by Daniel ONG from the 3d warehouse. So if you want to download that and follow along you can and the way that works is you just download this file into SketchUp and then save it once you've saved it you can go into twin motion and you can use the import function in order to import that so we're going to start off and we're going to import our model and one thing I want to um, pay attention to when we do this is going to be specifically down here under the collapse function so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go find our model and then when we do this, it's going to be pretty important that we click on this button for collapse and we're going to want to click on the button for keep hierarchy. And so from what I've seen, if you don't keep your hierarchy, um, this is going to affect how this handles everything off to the right hand side of the screen. And uh, so if you click the button collapse by material, what it does is it collapses all of those into groups based on the materials that are inside of your model but I've had some problems with that because it won't let me apply materials to individual items so for now what we're going to do is we're just going to um, click on the button for keep hierarchy we're also going to check the box for fix UV slash texture so um, just make sure you click on the keep hierarchy button when you set your collapse on this and then we're going to go go ahead and click OK and so what that's going to do is that's going to bring in this model inside of twin motion and so I, I will say I've brought this in more as an example file than uh, something I really want to create a super ultra realistic render for right now I really just want to focus on the materials in here and uh, so this is kind of open so it allows us to do that so the first thing I want to look at is just the material that have been applied to the faces inside of this uh, inside of this model so you can see how this uh, maintained all of the textures that were brought in from SketchUp so like this old brick material um, the concrete material that was applied to the floor those all got maintained and brought in and I believe those actually get placed in a folder and so if we were to go into our folder and look um, at the location where we brought these textures in this actually creates an extracted textures folder and it extracts all of the the textures from SketchUp and brings them in as images. So this actually brings those images in and stores them in the folder where you import your model. And so the first thing I want to look at is I want to look at how to sample different materials inside of your models. So you can either do that by clicking on this button right here for this tool called the material picker or by tapping the T key. And you can just kind of mouse over and select any material inside of twin motion. So you can see how I can select any of these different materials in here just by clicking on them with this activated. And once you do that, what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to see the different properties of the materials that have been selected so like for example right now I have this old brick material selected and I've got all these different things in here and you can see how if we come in here and play with them it starts changing these materials and textures around so you can actually customize these materials kind of however you want them to be customized and so we'll talk a little bit more about customizing materials in a second what I want to do for right now is I want to talk about how to change out materials inside of your model and so the way that we're going to be able to do that is by clicking on this little arrow on the left hand side of the screen and that's going to bring up that's going to bring up our library and so our library is going to contain a lot of different things that we can use in order to apply um, or change out materials inside of our models so if I click this drop down for example I can click on library and that gives me a little bit of everything but I can also click on the option for materials so twin motion has a lot of materials built in so these materials are materials that you can find like uh, brick material for example just by clicking on the brick folder and you can see how this gives you a list of built-in materials. You can also apply your own materials, which we're going to learn how to do in the second part of this video. Um, but for right now, what I want to do is just show you how to swap out materials. And so generally speaking, the way that this works is you swap out materials by replacing them inside of your model. So like, for example, let's say I wanted to replace this brick material with a twin motion material. Well, the way that I would do that 
and I'm going to go ahead and change this setting for a second and we'll talk about it in a second. But the way that you would do that is let's say you wanted to replace this brick material. Well, all you would do is just grab one of these materials and drag it over onto a face. And you can see how when I drag this over onto a face, um, this is replacing any material that I drag this over. Like for example, if I drag it over the concrete on the floor, you can see how everywhere that concrete material was applied, it's replacing that with this new brick material. Same thing with this old brick. If I drag this over this and then let up on my mouse, and you can see how what this did is this actually came in and this replaced that material um, with this new brick material. And you can really do this with any of the materials that are in here. So um, in this case, I think I'm going to leave it on this dirty brick setting. And at some point, it looks like I accidentally replaced my ceiling material. So I'm just going to put that back for now. Um, but you can see how now if I fly in and look at this, this has that new brick material applied to this face. And so that replaced the brick material everywhere where it occurred inside of the model. But sometimes that can get a little bit problematic because you don't always want to replace a material everywhere. Like for example, if I use the sample tool or the material picker tool and click on this, you can see how this default material is applied both to this wall and also to this ceiling. Well, let's say I wanted to come in here and select like a concrete material. If I was to click on this and I was to drag this concrete slabs material onto this face, you can see how not only is this replacing the material on this wall, it's also replacing the material on this ceiling, which isn't very realistic because this isn't what this material would be in real life. So I'm just going to do a control Z to undo this, and I'm going to show you another setting um, that's going to be really important. And that, that setting is right here, the option for apply to object as opposed to replace material. So right now with replace material selected, what that means is that's going to replace that material everywhere inside of this model. However, let's say that I wanted to just apply that material to this object inside of Twin Motion. Well, that works because we didn't collapse our hierarchy. We kept our hierarchy, meaning that this wall is actually in here as its own item inside of the uh, outliner or organizer on the right hand side of the page. So you can see if I was to click and drag this, for example, this is in here as a separate item than this right here. So you can see how the roof and the wall are two separate items. Well, what that means is if I was to click and hold this for a second and select the option for apply to object and then drag the concrete slabs material over here, you can see how that's only going to apply the concrete slab material to the one item in here that I had selected or that I dragged this onto. It's not going to apply it everywhere where that default material was. And what that means is you can come in here and you can replace materials on individual objects. So like for example, for this one, let's say I wanted this ceiling to have like a plaster on it. I could click and drag a plaster in and with this selected, nothing else with that um, default material is going get, to get replaced in here. It's literally only going to place this on this one object right here. And so what this does is this really allows you to get in here and change materials really quickly. So like for example, if I was to do a material picker over here on this item, you can see how it's just a white color. Well, I could come in here and I could find a metal material like let's say the brushed aluminum and I could apply that to this object really quickly. So you can see how I could swap this out and use this to replace the materials on different items without having to spend a whole lot of time on it. And so now what I want to do is I want to take a look at some of the options you have for customizing these different materials. So we've talked a little bit about applying those materials, but now let's look at how we can change the materials. So I'm just going to use this material picker function and I'm going to use it to select this material on the wall. Well, you can see how when you select this material on the wall and this is selected down here, you have a whole bunch of different options for different things you can change. And I'm going to run through them quickly. I will get more in depth on some of these settings in tomorrow's video about creating custom materials, but I want to kind of show you what this is capable of. So first of all, the color is going to allow you to select the colorization of this different material. So let's say, for example, that you wanted this to be a little more 
red or something like that, you can actually adjust the colorization of a material using this item right here. You can also make it lighter or darker. So if you wanted this to be a slightly darker brick, you can use this to select that as well. And you can store these custom materials over here if you or custom colors over here if you find one that you like by clicking the store button. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna kind of leave that one alone. Um, you can also, when we create a custom material, you can click on this more button. The more button is gonna be where you can actually load in your custom material um, texture files cell or your diffuse maps. So this is where you're going to apply in your custom materials when we do that, which we'll talk more about tomorrow. Um, there's also an option in here for opacity mask, meaning you can upload like an alpha mask in here and um, set if something's transparent or not. And then luminosity is just going to affect kind of the brightness of the material. So you can see if I drag this really far down, you're not really getting any brightness off of that color map. If I leave it at 50%, then this is looking pretty good. If I put this all the way in, here it looks a little brighter maybe a little more washed out so this is not the same as making this an, um, a light emitter that setting is elsewhere um, so those are the settings that are contained in the color section if I was to go back you can see how there's also options in here where you can adjust how reflective an item is. So like for example, on this brick material, if I was to drag this all the way up, it starts reflecting light, which is not very realistic. Um, so we're gonna kind of drag that down a little bit. Um, but you can use that to set the reflectivity of an object. You, you can also apply a map for your reflections in here if you wanna do that. So the scale function is an interesting function because it allows you to actually adjust the size of your materials. So you can see how I can drag this up or down to adjust how big this material is on this face. And this is actually probably the most powerful section of the material editor um, because not only does it contain things that allow you to set the scale of materials, it also contains some things that allow you to set the location of those materials. So you can see how if I come in here and click and drag on the move X or move Y, you can adjust how this material sits on this face. So like for example, um, if you were looking at, let's say you were looking at the floor and wanted this texture to line up with that. So this would just allow you to customize your placement of this object on the wall. And then there's also a setting in here for rotation. So you can adjust the rotation of your different objects in here. And uh, one thing, I don't know if I covered it before, but you can actually type in values in here. So um, you can be kind of precise about the way that these go in here just by typing in a value and hitting the enter key. So, and then the last option is really interesting. This actually allows you to animate your different materials. So you can see how if I set my speed X and my speed Y, what this is doing is this is actually animating this material moving inside of your model, which is a really interesting feature. Um, I think there's some interesting things you could do with it. In, in this case, probably what I would do, what I would use this for um, is I would probably use this if I had like a river or something like that, I would actually set this so that it's animated so that the water material is actually moving. So so this is a really interesting function. You probably wouldn't use it to animate your brick walls moving, but there's a lot of other things you could do with it as well. Um, the weather function allows you to set if an object or a material is affected by the weather settings inside of your model. So if I was to fly out here and let's say just for the case of this, um, that we applied this slightly worn bronze material. And let's say we went in and we adjusted our weather settings so that it was raining. So you can see how when this is raining, we'll just leave it like this, this material gets shiny, where if it was sunny, the material isn't shiny in the same way. So you can see how this is coming in here and this is, uh, because this is outside, this is treating this like it's getting rained on. And so it's looking wet and it's being affected by the weather. Well, if you had this selected and you turned off weather, you can see how it's not changing the way the material looks when this weather is being applied in here. So you can adjust if things get weather applied to them or not using this tool. And I'm not going to leave that that way, so we'll go ahead and fix that. The last function, I'm only gonna cover a little bit because we're gonna get way more in depth with that um, in a future video. But um, the settings over here also allow you to adjust if an object is metallic. So if I was to drag this all the way to the top, this would treat this as if it was metal. 
or not. You can also apply a map in here to set the metallicness. And there's also a function in here for bump mapping. And so what the bump mapping is going to do is that's going to affect, if you kind of look at these mortar joints in here, this is going to simulate the bumpiness of this material inside of your rendering. So um, this is going to allow you to affect how bumpy this looks, but you can also come in here and apply a normal map or a bump map in here um, for a custom material. So you can see how you can adjust the bumpiness in here by dragging this up and down. And then um, the glow function is going to allow you to affect if an object is an emitter of light. So this is going to going to be where you set if something emits light. So like for example if you had like a light bulb or something like that you would set the color to have a glow so it would actually emit light. You can also apply a map in here and you can also set it to turn on or off depending on if it's daytime or nighttime. Honestly, I haven't played around with the sound. I think what it does is it applies a sound based on what this material might be in a video. So like for example, if you walk through here on a concrete material, you could set that this would have a concrete sound. Two-sided, my understanding is that this affects if materials get applied to both sides of an object. However, it doesn't seem to be doing anything in here, so I'm not 100% clear what that one's actually doing. Um, so, but my thought was that it it would apply a material to both sides of an item. I'm not 100% clear on that one. So that should give you a general idea of the way materials work inside of Twin Motion. In the next video, I'm going to teach you how to bring in custom materials and create your own materials and apply them inside of your renderings. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know about all these features? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.